Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on solutions used to establish host security. Today we're going to begin by discussing some techniques for hardening physical hosts, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on hardening virtual hosts. We have a fair amount of information to go over, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin by discussing hardening physical hosts. Often the individual hosts on a network are the target of hackers. It is the resources that they contain that the attackers are after. Because the major purpose of networks is to create a way in which communication and data can flow between systems, they are vulnerable to being breached by hackers. This means that once a breach has occurred, it is vital that all of the hosts on a network be hardened against attack. Hardening hosts is the process of putting technological controls in place that help to ensure the safety and integrity of the hosts, including the data and resources that they contain. There are some basic methods of hardening hosts. The first one is Operating System Hardening, or OS Hardening. This is removing or disabling any unnecessary features and or services to reduce the OS's attack surface. All features and surfaces will present some type of vulnerability that can be exploited, so they all need to be reviewed and only vital services and features should be enabled. Then there is the operating system security settings. Review all security settings available in the operating system and enable as many of them as make sense to help harden the operating system. As a best practice, do not leave any defaults in place. Defaults are well known and may represent a chink in the operating system's armor. All hosts should have anti-malware installed. Anti-malware is installed to protect against common attacks. The anti-malware application should contain antivirus, anti-spyware, pop-up blockers, and anti-spam features. Another basic method of hardening hosts involves patch management. Ensure that the operating system is kept up to date with current security patches supplied by the manufacturer of the operating system. All software installed on the host should also be part of the patch management program to ensure that those applications don't become a weakness in the system. Additionally, all firmware should also be patched as required. Then there are some more advanced methods of hardening hosts, and the first method is to use a trusted OS. Using an operating system that implements multiple layers of security by design, as in it requires authentication and authorization before granting access to host resources is an advanced method of hardening hosts. Whitelisting applications can also be done. This is where only applications that are specifically designated in the whitelist are allowed to run on a host. Then there is blacklisting applications. This is the process of explicitly denying or blocking named applications from being able to run on a specified host. An advanced option of host hardening is using host-based firewalls. This is using host-based firewalls to control what network traffic can be allowed into or out of the host. This is especially important for mobile devices, in particular laptops. Host-based intrusion detection systems may also be used. These can be implemented to monitor the host to help detect when an intrusion has occurred to help minimize or contain any damage. And finally, host software baselining can be implemented. Baselining software can be used to ensure that all operating systems and applications on hosts meet or exceed the minimum level of security that is required. Physical security controls can be overlooked when implementing host hardening methods. If an attacker has unfettered physical access to a host, it will not matter how much hardening has been done to the host system. If nothing else, the attacker can just walk away with the asset in order to breach it at his or her leisure. 
To reduce a hacker's physical access to hosts, some physical security controls should be put in place. Some of the controls that should absolutely be used include locking cabinets for networking equipment and servers. Safes may also be considered for the storage of smaller hosts when they're not in use. And finally, cable locks can also be used to help physically secure hosts from theft. Now it's time to discuss hardening virtual hosts. There are various methods that can be used to help harden virtual hosts, and the first up is the snapshot. A snapshot is an image of a virtual host created at a point in time when that host is secure. A snapshot can be used to quickly revert the virtual host in cases where security has been compromised. Snapshots can also be used to bring up new hosts into service quickly and efficiently as needed, creating elasticity in the system. Patch management also needs to be done with virtual hosts. These have the same considerations as with physical hosts. Then there is host availability. High availability methods should be used to ensure that virtual host systems are available to users as needed and this is achieved by removing single points of failure. Virtual hosts require different security control testing. That means that separate security control testing should be conducted on virtual systems to ensure that they operate as expected. And finally, there's sandboxing. When high security is needed, a sandboxed environment can be created. This is creating a virtual environment in which the virtual machines are restricted to what they have access to and what can be done with them, meaning that they cannot play outside of their virtual sandbox. That concludes this session on solutions used to establish host security. We began by talking about hardening physical hosts, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on hardening virtual hosts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.